This presentation is on the mechanisms of excreted pathogen removal in waste stabilisation ponds. Normally, when we monitor the performance of a pond system, we just determine the removal of an indicator bacterium, such as E. coli or faecal coliforms. The slide shows the results of some work we did quite a few years ago on a series of ponds in northeast Brazil. The pond system comprised a one-day anaerobic pond, followed by a facultative and three maturation ponds, each with a retention time of five days. We monitored faecal coliforms, two bacterial pathogens, Salmonella and Campylobacter, and two lots of excreted viruses, enteroviruses and rotavirus. The faecal coliforms were reduced from 2 times 10 to the 7 per 100 mil in the raw wastewater to 7,000 per 100 mil in the final effluent, and the Campylobacter from 70 per 100 mil to zero, well at least undetectable, in the effluent of the first maturation pond. The Salmonelli were reduced from 20 per 100 mil to zero, undetectable again, in the effluent of the third maturation pond although I suspect the removals of the Campylobacters and Salmonelli were similar. It's just that we are able to detect very small numbers of Salmonelli, but not of Campylobacters. The enteroviruses were reduced from 10,000 per 10 litres to just under 10 per 10 litres in the final effluent, and the rotaviruses from 800 per 10 litres to around 3 per 10 litres. These results show that when the effluent contained around 7,000 faecal coliform per 100 mil, there were no Campylobacters, no Salmonelli, and only very small numbers of viruses. We were also able to study the removal of Vibrio cholerae, the causative agent of cholera, soon after the current cholera pandemic showed up in northeast Brazil in the 1980s. The pond system we had was a little odd, a one-day anaerobic pond, followed by several two-day ponds. The number of V. cholerae was just under 500 per litre in the raw wastewater and most were removed in the anaerobic pond, and thereafter a little in each of the next five ponds, becoming undetectable in the effluent of the fourth two-day pond after a total retention time of 11 days. At this point, the faecal coliform count was 60,000 per 100 mil. It's clear from these results that most V. cholerae are removed in the anaerobic pond, but why is this? To answer this, we did some lab work in Brazil, and found that V. cholerae is very sensitive to quite low sulphide concentrations, about 3 mg per litre. In anaerobic ponds, the sulphide concentration is about 10 to 12 mg per litre, so there's more than enough to kill off most of the cholera vibrios. We also monitored the removal of human intestinal nematode eggs, the eggs of Ascaris, Trichuris and the human hookworms. These are the geohelminths, which comprise Category C of the Unitary Environmental Classification of Water and Excreta-Related Communicable Diseases. Most of these eggs were removed in the anaerobic pond, with the remaining small numbers being gradually reduced in the subsequent ponds. Now we come to the actual mechanisms of excreted pathogen removal in ponds. Well, it's pretty clear that helminth eggs are simply removed by sedimentation, and the same is true for protozoan cysts, although, because these are much smaller than helminth eggs, their sedimentation rate, and hence their removal, is much lower. With the viruses, we are less certain, because there are very few data on viral removal in ponds. But it seems that they are mostly removed by adsorption onto settleable solids, and thus by sedimentation when these solids settle. Viruses have quite a high surface charge, so at least this is a reasonable hypothesis. They also adsorb onto algae, we know this from scanning electron micrographs, and so they will settle with the algae, as these algae die. With the bacteria, there are several candidate removal mechanisms. Firstly, there's time and temperature. Whatever bacteria are going to do, grow or die, they do it more quickly at higher temperatures. And they require more time to grow or die at lower temperatures. Secondly, some algae excrete toxins which can kill faecal bacteria. Thirdly, ponds are low in carbon dioxide and high in dissolved oxygen, and this is the exact opposite of what occurs in their natural habitat, the gut. And then there's high pH, and we know that high pH values occur in ponds as a result of algal activity. The in-pond pH can be above 9, even above 10. Marais considered time and temperature only, and his design equation for E. coli removal is given on the slide. And we know from our work on facultative ponds in northeast Brazil that organic loading, BOD loading, is also important in this type of pond. 
This somewhat complicated slide tells us how the values of several parameters in the effluent of a primary facultative pond, one of the ones we studied in northeast Brazil, varied over a 24-hour period. The x-axis is time, starting at 8 a.m. one day and finishing at 8 a.m. the following day. In the box at the bottom of the central diagram, we're plotting algal biomasses, chlorophyll A, the open triangles, and faecal coliform numbers, the solid triangles. You can see that when the chlorophyll is low, at night, faecal coliform numbers are high, and vice versa, albeit with a slight lag in the decrease of faecal coliforms. So high chlorophyll equals high algae, and this equals low faecal coliforms. So are the algae doing something to kill off the bacteria? The box immediately above the bottom box gives the data for BOD and suspended solids. Both these peak at the same time as the algal chlorophyll peaks, and this is what we would expect as most of the effluent BOD and suspended solids is due to the algae in the effluent. In the box second from the top, we see the same peak with total phosphorus, the solid diamonds, but not of course for the other two parameters in this box, ammonia and soluble phosphorus, as these are not associated with the algae. Now in the top box we have the data for temperature, the solid circles, for pH, the solid triangles, and for dissolved oxygen, the open triangles. Our DO meter had a maximum reading of 20 mg per litre, which is why there's no peak shown for DO, although clearly in reality there was one. All three of these parameters peaked at the same time as chlorophyll, and this tells us that algal activity increases with increasing temperature, and that both pH and DO increase with increasing algal activity and, as we've already seen, increasing algal activity means a fall in faecal coliform numbers. We can't be sure from the data here, but it's likely that either the high pH or the high dissolved oxygen, or both, are responsible for the decrease in faecal coliform numbers. Here we have two plots of results from that facultative pond in northeast Brazil. At the top, the plot of the first order rate constant for faecal coliform removal, Kb in reciprocal days, against the BOD loading in kilos per hectare per day, and at the bottom, the plot of the in-pond, not effluent, chlorophyll A concentration in micrograms per litre against the loading rate. So we can simply plot the first order rate constant against the in-pond chlorophyll concentration, and we get, not quite but almost, a straight line. This tells us for sure that the algae are doing something which kills off the faecal coliforms, and presumably other faecal bacteria as well. In lab studies here in Leeds, and in fieldwork in Portugal and Brazil, we found that there were two main factors responsible for faecal bacterial die-off in ponds. Firstly, high pH, and pH values above 9.4 are rapidly lethal to all faecal bacteria, with the exception of Vibrio cholerae, which tolerates high pH quite well, so it's fortunate that it's killed off quickly by the sulphides in anaerobic ponds. And secondly, the combination of high DO and high visible light intensity. This is the conceptual model we developed for faecal bacterial removal in facultative and maturation ponds, but remember it doesn't apply to Vibrio cholerae. The sun clearly has the most important role. Solar energy heats up the pond, so the faecal bacteria die more quickly, and it's the raw energy for photosynthesis. Rapid photosynthesis raises the pH to above 9.4, which leads to rapid faecal bacterial die-off. And finally, the combination of high visible light intensity and high dissolved oxygen leads to rapid photooxidative death of the faecal bacteria. Finally, we looked at helminth egg removal in ponds in Brazil, India and Kenya. The slide shows the plot of egg numbers on the y-axis against pond retention time on the x-axis. The upper solid line is the line of best fit, and the lower dotted line is the boundary of the lower 95% confidence interval and this is what we use for design. This equation allows us to design a pond system specifically for helminth egg removal, and we need to be able to do this if the effluent is going to be used for crop irrigation.